Kobe, it's a, uh, another massive fight in your career, another headliner, $6 million gate we're hearing, huge uh, attendance, maybe top 10 all time. Do big events like this still get you excited or is this just, just business as normal at this point in your career? I'm a man of my word, John. 10 push-ups if you want to answer for me. It's tough, man. I've only got one lung, so it's a challenge for me. You got to get it down and at least try. <laughs> Quick turnaround, Kobe. Uh, is that just for Jorge or would you have done that against anybody? Is it important to get back and fight or was it just because of this opportunity? Do you think I'm joking or what? I'm serious, Flavi, but you got to get down and give me 10 push-ups. All right, fair enough, Kobe. Thanks for your time. Kobe, I'm curious, how much of this fight is about having a big fight and how much of it is about fighting Jorge Masvidal? This is just a personal rivalry. This isn't about the money. I didn't come here to fight for money. You know, I took a pay cut. I didn't, I didn't care about the money for this fight. This is about setting a blood rivalry. You know, this is a long time coming. You know, this guy's been holding it off as long as he could until he had no chance, now, or no other opportunities. You know, this is the biggest opportunity he can get to pay his alimony, to pay his child support. So, of course, he's got to come and take this losing paycheck. When you said that you got a pay cut for this fight, I'm curious, are you still getting a slice of the pay-per-view, or did you agree to forego that just to get this fight? Yeah, I forego the pay-per-view. I don't care about the pay-per-view for this fight. You know, I, I did, this is a personal fight. I want to come put on a show to the UFC and show that, that I'm deserving of being a lifetime UFC fighter. Is there going to be any issue for you controlling the emotion in the cage, or once you're in there, will it just be another fight? It's just another fight for me. You know, I, I put the emotions to the side. You know, I'm not, a, I, I'm not an ultimate feelings champion. I'm an ultimate fighting champion. So there will be no feelings involved and no mercy on Ori Masvidal on Saturday night. He said that when you guys used to spar together, he used to be able to make you quit through body shots and things like that. I'm curious. He, he even asked his interviewer to ask you if that was the case. Did you ever quit in sparring through body shots? Not one time. You can't believe anything that guy says. He's full of lies, full of manipulation to the media to make him look like the good guy. You know, he, he likes to always say I was sleeping on his couch. No, this is 2022. Get your gender pronouns right. I slept on her couch. And by her, I mean his wife. They're still legally married. Maritza Masvidal, the lady that sacrificed it all so we could chase our dreams together, you know, so we could just be focused on our dreams, you know. And he's out there cheating on her, cheating on his wife, cheating on his kids. So Saturday night, this is for Maritza and all the people he backstabbed. Uh, acknowledging gender pronouns is very progressive of you, Colby. I'm kind of surprised. He said that the headline on Sunday morning will be Colby in critical condition might not make it. In your opinion, what will the headline be on Sunday? The only people that are in critical condition on Sunday are his kids. You know, he turned his back on them. He doesn't want to, you know, own up and be the dad that he should be to them. He's a deadbeat dad. He's a deadbeat person. And he's just going to be playing dead on Saturday night on pay-per-view. Cool, right uh, during that same interview, Jorge brought up things like a poker debt uh, that like you were in after playing poker so much. Uh, and he brought up, uh, he kind of viewed himself as your mentor rather than your brother. So what do you make of all these other things he's saying? You know, I just have to laugh at that. You know, I got, you know, I got a house on me right now. If you see my jewelry, this is a legit house around my neck. So, you know, anything the media says or he says is inconsequential. You know, it, there's no truth to it, and it's just more lies. You know, you can't believe anything that guy says. He says he was going to the White House to you guys. How many times did he go to the White House? You know, what did he do for Donald Trump? Donald Trump doesn't give a shit about him. You know, he just used him to get the Latin vote. So, you know, no one cares about George and all his lies and, and manipulation. He's, he's a thief. Look at him. He went to jail twice for grand theft. The guy's a thief. He's a backstabber. The guy's the biggest piece of shirt on planet Earth. Dan Lambert also gave an interview this morning saying that he kind of gave you uh, like an ingredient to kind of become this outspoken individual. And he kind of regrets how he went about that because of how it played out with you two. Man, I, I didn't take Dan Lambert for a liar, but, you know, I still respect the guy, but he's definitely lying. That had nothing to do with Dan Lambert. I, I decided to make that decision on my own. You know, after Singapore, he never told me going into my fight with Damian Maia that I needed to that I needed to do something to change something because the UFC was going to cut me. They said no matter what, going into that fight, they told Dan behind closed doors, hey, we're not, we, don't, we have no use for Colby. You know, he's, he's not entertaining. He doesn't draw tickets. So no matter what he does in the fight with Damian Maia, he, we're not going to re-sign him. Dan never told me that. He didn't tell me until after the fight. But I went out there and took my destiny in my own hands, and I created something bigger than, than life. 
Uh, I think on the, the countdown, you also said because of your quote unquote good lifestyle choices is what leads to your uh, incredible cardio. So specifically, what do you mean by these, these good lifestyle choices? Yeah, I live the life every single day. You know, you don't see me in the club, you know, partying every weekend, you know, living this lavish lifestyle. You know, yeah, I like to buy some nice jewelry and, and, and you know, have because I can because I can't afford it. But, you know, I live a very clean lifestyle, I eat healthy food every day. I'm in the gym every single day trying to get better, work on my crafts. I never asked for handouts. I'm not like George Mosfet. All that guy's the definition of handouts. He used to use an Obama phone. He used to use food stamps for the government. He's Fidel Castro Jr. The guy's the definition of communism. And here he is trying to act like he's a right wing, right winger now. So it's just funny the hypocrisy. Kobe down here. You talked about Trump briefly. Have you been in contact with the Trump family or any members of them coming out for this fight? Yeah, I've been in touch with them. Uh, you know, I know Dana said that when we first got this fight announced that the big man was going to be coming out, but he's got a big, busy schedule. You know, he, he just launched that new uh, Truth Social platform, so I know he's really busy working on that, and he's campaigning again. He's got a big run coming up in 2024. He's trying to make America great again. He's trying to undo all these crappy policies that have led to all this inflation in America and just this country going down the toilet. So he's trying to bring it back. Thank you. God bless Donald Trump and the Trump family. And George is in one of these rooms around here. We don't know where, but um, is it, well, this will be the closest you've been to him, well, I'm presuming since an alleged incident at ATT. When was the last time that you remember seeing George face to face and what happened? Yeah, face to face in a room, you know, besides, you know, a little Zoom interview with Stephen A. Smith last week. Uh, yeah, since... I think this we got separate. No, I think it was UFC Anaheim when Daniel Cormier was fighting uh, Stipe. Stipe, and uh, yeah, that was the last time I fought him. He was yelling from the fifth row back because, of course, he didn't have front row seats like me. He wasn't the best fighter in the world with the championship belt around his his waist. So, you know, he, that's all he does. He's all bark. He's all talk. He's no walk. And final one for me: Are you willing to bury the hatchet after the fight, regardless of the result? Absolutely not. Who wants to bury the hatchet with a, a criminal, with a thief, with, with a dirtbag scumbag? Dude, the guy, more of his family likes me than they even like him. So I'm not burning with this dirtbag criminal. You know, anytime I ever see that guy, he's going to have to leave Miami. The city isn't big enough for both of us. So if I see him in Miami, he's getting dropped in his head. But he doesn't even train in Miami, actually. He's from Broward County. He trains in Coconut Creek, Florida, and lives there. I'm, I'm from Miami. I live in Hialeah. I train in Hialeah. I'm in the heart of Miami, so I'm the king of Miami. I'm going to prove it on Saturday night. Thank you. Colby right here. Colby, everyone's obviously wondering about, you know, like, are these guys going to be able to keep those emotions in check? What's going to happen when the cage door closes? Can you explain as best as you can when you guys are in there, the ref says go. What do you think is going to be going through your mind when you're finally face-to-face, -face, get throw hands with Jorge? You know, a lot of, lot of violent intentions, you know, I'm going to inflict a lot of pain on this guy. He's, he's talked recklessly, you know, and just a lot of lies and trying to make me look like the bad guy and trying to make himself, put himself in a positive light. So I'm just going to inflict pain on him. I'm not going to think about, you know, all the emotions and all the energy and, you know, our past. I'm just going to think about the present and the moment and, and putting that guy in, in his death chair. When people talk about rivalries, some of the best ones are the, the ones that force their opponent to overcome their insecurities. Are there any that Jorge brings out in you that you've had to overcome? No, not at all, because nothing he says is true. It's all lies. So, you know, I'm just being myself. You know, I don't, I don't care what you guys think of me. If you think I'm the bad guy, if you think I'm the good guy, Saturday night you can be the judge of what kind of guy I am. In terms of the welterweight division, it's looking like Kamar Usman's probably going to take on Leon Edwards. Obviously a big win here. You still get to stay in that conversation to get back up there. Who do you think wins in that, that coming fight? Uh, you know, I, I have no idea. I could care less who wins. You know, I'm just worried about my business on Saturday night and handling another personal beef, you know, with Dustin Poirier next. That, that fight needs to happen. He's talked too reckless in the media now. He said it's on site, and the last time he was talking to you, clickbait merchants, he was saying, oh, I'm not going to fight Kobe uh, in the octagon where there's finances on the line. I'm going to fight him in the streets, and we're both going to go to jail. So it's funny because, you know, it's very ironic because he talks about being a family guy, a good guy, but he wants to fight me in the streets and potentially go away from his family. So 
Dustin Poirier has all these stipulations to fight me. I just have one stipulation. My one stipulation is he lets the world watch and enjoy themselves. You know, Dustin, like you do with Connor when he's in bed with your wife, Jolie, you little cuck. Colby, do you care about big fights as opposed to winning the title, or is it just what you can talk about with the UFC in terms of what they offer you? You know, it's just about being the biggest and best fights the UFC has to offer, you know. There's a reason they call me the people's champ. I want to put on the best fights for the people and the most exciting fights and, and just do good business for the UFC. I love being a UFC fighter. I have tremendous respect for this company and what they build. So I want to, you know, repay the favor by just putting on the biggest and best fights of what the fans want. Thank you. Colby at the back over here, bro. Um, I was just wondering if you can talk to me a little bit about why uh, Cesar Canero is the perfect fit for you now. Man, Cesar Carnero is, man, he's changed my life, man. That guy is just, he's incredible. He's changed my reflexes, my hand-eye coordination, just the way I fight, you know. So I'm very blessed, you know. I know that George tried to say that narrative. Oh, you got kicked out of ATT. You must be so, what do you mean? I upgraded. I got a better gym. And George forgets to leave out the fight, the facts. He got kicked out as well. We both got kicked out. But you know what? There was only one guy that went begging back. Oh, damn, please take me back, please. And of course, Dan took him back, and Dan invited me back as well. I decided, no, I'm better off with Cesar Carnero. I'm better off with Daniel Valverde. Daniel Valverde, my jiu-jitsu coach, is a guy that Dan Lambert, he, listen, he has all these great black belts at American Top Team. You know, he has all these great, you know, grappling wizards. Daniel Valverde was a guy he was paying privates to and paying top dollar to have him come out there. So I'm happy. I have, a, I have the best grappling coach in the world. I have the best striking coach in Cesar Car Carnero in the world. So I'm only getting better every single fight, and you see that every time I step in the octagon. So I'm thankful that this separation happened with my old gym, and now I have the best coaches in the world. What are some of the best differences for you between ATT and MMA Masters? Just getting personalized attention. Before, it was just, I was in a team setting. I was training with a bunch of athletes, you know. It wasn't, the focus wasn't just on me. And when we're at this stage in my career and in these big main event pay-per-view fights, I should be getting that personalized attention, you know, where we're just focusing on game planning on each and every fight that we're, we're taking. So I never got that before, and now I'm getting it. And I'm just truly blessed. I'm thankful to Daniel Valverde, Cesar Carnero, Jonathan Lopez, and Charlie Weiss for what they've been able to offer me. And Saturday night, you're going to see something special. Thank you.